the Raiders and the Broncos, two original members of the AFL's Western Division. Certainly over the years, they've gotten to know each other quite well. Now, the ring of Raiders Broncos may not seem the same as Raiders Chiefs or, for a while, Raiders Jets, but make no mistake, Oakland, then Los Angeles, and Denver have had some classics. dominated Denver through the 60s and mid-70s, winning 24 of their first 28 meetings. Included in that span, their first Monday night clash in 1973, when the snake, Kenny Stabler, hit Mike Ciani for an 80-yard touchdown. Then, after a George Bland, a field goal with just 36 seconds to go, gave the Raiders a three-point lead, the Broncos moved quickly down the field to set up Jim Turner's 35-yard field goal to end the game in a tie. An emotional victory for the Bronx. Less than two months later, Denver was one win away from the AFC West title. Only Oakland stood in their way. Stabler ended all Denver hopes when he connected with Ciani for a 31-yard touchdown. The Raiders won the AFC West. Fred Miller's Broncos crushed the Raiders in 77 and 78, winning four of the five games played. In 1977, Denver unleashed a furious pass rush on Kenny Stabler, picking off seven of the Snake's passes, including one for a touchdown. The Broncos stole the win at Oakland. The Raiders gained some revenge in their final regular season meeting that year, continuing their success at Mile High Stadium, where they hadn't lost since 1962, a span of 15 games. Many games throughout the years, but only once did the Raiders and Broncos meet in the postseason. Tonight on our distant replay section, we take a look back at the 1977 AFC Championship game at a frenzied Mile High Stadium. It was a game that put the orange crush of the Denver Broncos on the map. And in retrospect, it was probably the game that planted the first seed for future use of instant replay. Mile High Stadium, Denver, Colorado. Sell out 75,000 fans, 20 degrees. Denver has not beaten Oakland here in Denver in 15 games, not since 1962. The Raiders was the type team when they walk out on the field, your knees are supposed to be knocking. We were letting them know that some new guys was on the block and that could play with them. We was really looking forward to that game because that particular game would solve over either make us or break us. We had never beaten the Raiders twice in one year. To me, that was it, you know, to beat the Raiders twice. And, and we knew if we were going to go to the championship game, they had to come to us to win it. The recipe for this game was seasoned with big plays, but it got its spice in the third quarter. Leading 7-3 to three and about to score again, the Broncos were saved by the whistle. And in for the Oakland Raiders, Lytle! Oh, what a hit by Jack Tatum! Number 32, Tatum, was there a fumble? The Raiders say they had the football, but I believe the whistle was blown dead. The Raiders think they have the football. Mike McCoy, number 76, running off the field with it, but they called it back, and Denver still has possession. John Madden can't believe it. We were struggling in that game. You know, we didn't have a punt return. We didn't have all those things. We were just scrapping. We were just scrapping and, you know, trying to make the best we could of it. And and then, you know, and, and that was a type of play we needed. We, we needed that play down there in the goal line when they fumbled. Well, they're going up the middle. They've got four shots to get a, get a touchdown. Rob Lytle was crushed by a tackle from Jack Tatum. Lost the football, but apparently after the whistle. But obviously the fumble occurred before Lytle hit the ground. And apparently in that mass of humanity, the officials did not see it or that McCoy took the ball away from a Denver player. The officials ruled that his forward progress was stopped. In that part of it, they were correct. But what unfortunately they couldn't tell in all of those players that the ball came out. The ball came out almost immediately. Uh, it was a fumble, and we were wrong on the call. But there's a play that could be the key play in this game. And there was a very strong push for the possibility then of, of instant replay. Here's a television cameraman who was standing in the end zone with a handheld camera. He had the correct shot. And why shouldn't we be able somehow to be able to make use of this play? So that this began to change my mind about instant replay to a point where I felt, why don't you go and make use of the electronic devices that are available to you? I'll tell you a story about that. Now it's like 10 years later, and I'm broadcasting for CBS. Art McNally is ahead of the officials. 
So he's at CBS, and he's giving a talk, a rules talk. And he has this film, and they're going back and forth. You know, is this a good play? Is that, what should you call here? What should you call there? So he's in the area of fumble. And, you know, is this a fumble? And everyone goes, yeah! And he goes, yeah, it is. Is this a fumble? No, no, it's not. You know, yeah, no, and everything. So in the middle of this, I, and, and it blurts out, and I swear I didn't premeditate because I didn't know what was going to happen. I said, how about Rob Lytle's fumble in Denver? <laughs> he goes, that was a fumble. I said, I knew it was. It took him all those years to, to say there was a fumble. But I don't, you know, I don't know that we would have won that game anyway. So it's first and goal at the one-yard line. John Keyworth reached the end zone on the next play and felt no remorse about the lucky break that got him there. The only ones that cry are the ones that lose. That's the way it is in life. And that's the way it was that day. But it was wonderful, and you don't care. Let them cry, you know? Let them cry. <laughs> the miracle has happened. The Broncos... Instant replay has since come and gone. Officials, like players, and coaches make mistakes. So today, the human element, rather than technology, makes the final call. <laughs> <laughs>